Hey guys, I wanted to go ahead and drop another prayer call real quick. And I'm just going to get right into the reading. It's Luke chapter 22, 48. It says, Betrayest thou the Son of Man with a kiss? And that's a question. Would you betray the Son of Man with a kiss? The kisses of an enemy are deceitful. Let me be on my guard when the world puts on a loving face, for it will. And if possible, betray me as it did my master with a kiss. Whenever a man is about to stab religion, he usually professes very great reverence for it. Let me beware of the sleek-faced hypocrisy, which is armor-bearer to hearsay and infidelity. Knowing the deceivableness of unrighteousness, let me be wise as a serpent to detect and avoid designs of the enemy. The young man, void of understanding, was led astray by a kiss of the strange woman. May my soul be so graciously instructed all this day that the much fair speech of the world may have no effect upon me. Holy Spirit, let me not, a poor frail son of man, be betrayed with a kiss. But what if I should be guilty of the same accursed sin as Judas, that son of perdition? I have been baptized into the name of the Lord Jesus, and I am a member of his visible church. I sit at the communion table. All these are so many kisses of my lips. Am I sincere in them? If not, I'm a base traitor. And do I live in the world as carelessly as others do, and yet make a profession of being a follower of Jesus? Then I must expose religion to ridicule, and lead men to speak evil of the holy name by which I am called. Surely if I act thus inconsistently, I am a Judas. And if it were better for me that I had never been born, dare I hope that I am clear in this matter, then, O Lord, keep me so. O Lord, make me sincere and true. Preserve me from every false way. And let me betray... Never let me betray my Savior. I do love thee, Jesus, and though I often grieve you, yet I would desire to abide faithful even unto death. O God forbid that I should be a high-soaring professor and then fall at last into the lakes of fire because I betrayed my master with a kiss. Um, the last two days, guys, we've been talking about hypocrisy a little bit. I mean, it's come up at least twice, uh, yesterday and today. And I just feel like in, in the body of Christ right now, we have a bunch of Judases. And it's not to say that they're not born again or they don't have salvation, but what are they doing with that salvation? You know, that keeps, keeps on it seems like that keeps on being a reoccurring theme as well. So are we going to betray Jesus Christ with a kiss? You know, are we going to butter him up? Are we going to butter up the world and talk a big talk and then not walk it? I'm not perfect. And if I'm not perfect, I've got like a big 2 by 4 in my eye. And if i got a 2 by 4 in my eye, how can I even see to instruct you how to pull the splinter out of yours? Well, we work out our own salvation with fear and trembling, and to fear God is to hate evil. And the fear of the Lord is literally we don't want to let our Father down. We don't want to disappoint Him. So it's not that we're afraid of Him because He's a big scary uh, dictator. We're scared of Him because we're afraid we might disappoint Him. And I don't know about you guys, but I don't like to disappoint my Father. I definitely don't want to betray my brother with a kiss. So, I, I don't want to betray y'all with a kiss. You know, I pretty much own up to my mistakes when I make them. I try to address them as soon as possible. And with immediate obedience, I try to repent as, as best I can. And when I fall short, I ask for help from God. I ask for Jesus Christ to, to take my hand and help me through the hard times. Um, I was listening to a sermon earlier today. And there was something that really resonated with me, and it's that the anointing, when you're anointed of God, is not consistent. You've got your ups and your downs, and if you don't manage the ups properly, then when you go down, you can go way down, you know, and then one wrong move can set you back years. And I can attest to that, at least three years of my life. Now, they weren't wasted. I made the most of those three years, and not all three of them were you know, stuck in, in slavery, but a good portion of those three years were, 
And when you become a slave to the system, it's easy to get resentful. Or when you get stuck in debt, it's easy to get upset with God or life. You know, but life's not fair. Nobody ever said life was going to be fair. And my heart just breaks because I made my bed and I, I, I tried my best to lay in it. I made it, you know. There's a lot of people that are having situations going on right now that's not really anything of their own. It's not their fault, you know. Got somebody who's got skin cancer and my heart's just broken for her. Um, it's my, my will that she would be healed immediately. And I don't know if that's God's will. But my Father's will in heaven be done, not my own. Even Jesus prayed that and said it multiple, multiple times. Um, you know, there's people with throat issues. There's people with, there's a lot of pneumonia issues. I mean, there's an uncanny number of people that have liquid in their lungs and that are getting infected and that are getting really sick because of it. So, you know, the medical conditions, the cancer in particular, cancer and the pneumonia, liver, kidneys, I mean, all of it, and we need help. This world is a corrupt, dying world, and we speak life over it. You know, there's power of life and death in the tongue, and we just speak life over it. So, dear Father God, Abba in heaven, we just pray to you right now, and we make our supplication, begging in the Spirit, that you can uh, hear our prayers and hear our cries. And Father God, we love you for who you are. We love you for all that you do. And... Who, what father would give their hungry child a rock to eat? Not you. You give us bread. Father God, we want the everlasting waters of life. And we just ask for your Holy Spirit to pour out. And we, we proclaim faith healing. With our faith and by his stripes we're healed. And if it be your will, Father God, just supernaturally heal them right now. You know, I'm claiming that. And if two or more can claim it and it be your will, we might have to wait patiently and persevere through that patient waiting. Father God, we just love you so much. We wouldn't even ask you this if it wasn't important. We wouldn't waste your time. We wouldn't waste your ears to hear. But it's not a waste for us. But we do need to lean on you and not our own understanding. We need to lean on your word and not what we think or feel or believe. We need to be confirmed in your scriptures because you are the word and you made your son only begotten flesh. He died on the cross and if we believe that he died on the cross for our sins and we believe that he went to the grave and was resurrected, that we can be resurrected too and we're assured of that salvation and of that resurrection. God, you've elected us. For that salvation and if somebody's hurt it right now they can be saved if they just call on the name of the lord and blessed be your holy name father god and we just thank you for um, hearing us and uh you know, more than anything i just want to have intimacy with you father god i want to have your uh, affections poured out abundantly i want to hold your hand i want to hug you and with a holy kiss, I want to kiss you on the cheek. I want to kiss you on the lips. Like a baby boy would do to his father. Um, I miss my dad. My earthly dad. But there's nothing I can do about that. And I know someday we'll be back together again. But what are you going to do? I'm going to lean on you, Father God, because you're my father in heaven. And I just offer my love to you. And I just ask for on the petition and behalf of supplicating for others. God, please heal them and give them the same desires of their hearts and give them the desires of my heart. And honor that, Father God. We just love you so much. All these things we humbly ask in, in Jesus Christ's name. Amen. And guys, before I go, I just wanted to say one thing. Those pig tracks the feral pigs, the tracks that we've been seeing the last couple days. Uh, when I hit the trail, literally at the very head of the trail where the gate's at, I saw a mama pig with about six to eight little babies. I've lived out here for almost a decade. I've never seen the actual pigs before. And it was pretty cool. So I just thought y'all might like to hear that. I didn't get to document it, but 
Love you. Later.